evening to all of you. My name is Muhammad Abdul Rezak. I'm a moderator for this webinar on Multidimensional Poverty Index 2020, Policy Implications and Way Forward. It gives me immense pleasure uh, to welcome you all to this particular event and which I, I believe is going to be a fascinating discussion. And this is being organized by the Research and Policy Integration for Development Rapid. Now, poverty like beauty lies in the eye of the beholder that some of us were taught, you know, at least in the university. Now, the thing is this, despite you know, that particular more value judgmental aspect, we know that the science and art of poverty measurements are subject matter of great interest and have huge, huge policy implications. We all know Bangladesh made significant progress in poverty elevation over the past several decades. But after COVID-19, I guess the, some of the gains are going to be lost at least temporarily. Now in the aftermath of this global pandemic, the policy measures will have to receive a reinvigorated approach in terms of better understanding of poverty and designing better policy methods in dealing with them. And it is in this context that this particular seminar is going to be so helpful because we all need to have better understanding of the concept and application of multidimensional poverty. And this can now never be over even the current context uh, we, we are in here. And today we are extremely to have a special time and Dr. Auka, she does, does not, not need, need any interaction. She is the director of Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative at the University of Oxford. And she indeed pioneered and popularized the concept of multidimensional poverty and making it operational. Thank you, Dr. Alkar, for giving us uh, the time uh, today. We also have three distinguished uh, researchers from Bangladesh as our panelists, and all of them have done a lot of work on poverty measurement issues. We have Dr. Esam Zulfikar Ali, who is a senior research fellow at the Bangladesh Institute of Development. Have Dr. Dr. M. Oxu, who is the Department of Development at the University, and of course we have Dr. Mafus Kopi, who is director. Bangladesh Institute of International and Strategic Time Management colleagues uh, uh, to finish the event within uh, a kind of, you know, an hour time frame. I would like our uh, keynote speaker to have 20 minutes to make the presentation, followed by, and that should give us around 20 minutes, a good discussion on the, on the, on the issue. I would like uh, to request our other participants to use the chat box to share their comments and suggestions. And you could also raise your hands uh, during the open uh, discussion time. And uh, I would like to you know, give, you, uh, give some of you the floor to ask uh, questions or, or share any comments that you, you, you may have. Now, if these suggestions are acceptable, and without much further ado, let me invite Dr. Sabina Alkair to make her presentation. Uh, Thank you so much. It's really an honor and a joy to be here. Um, I am very curious about the feedback and how these results are explained to you. And the chair got it exactly right. We need to think about policy, um, both the policy that created the changes we will see, and also during a kind of COVID, how we continue the momentum of poverty reduction against all odds. So what I will do today is share some slides that are quite recent from the Global MPI 2020, which we launched with the UNDP um, just on last week. And then also go a little bit more 
of that report to Bangladesh. And you will know the global alternative report. It is not a perfect measure, but it is a measure we developed to poverty in developing countries in a way that would complement the monetary poverty measures. So the global MPI covers three dimensions, health, education, and living standards, which are equally weighted. And the indicators within each dimension are equally weighted. You are deprived if nobody in your household has completed six years of schooling, or if a child is not attending school up until class eight. If anybody in the household uh, is undernourished, or if a child has died, and if you don't have clean cooking fuel, adequate sanitation, safe drinking water, electricity, good quality housing materials, and more than one of a small of assets, then you're deprived in each of these indicators. A person is identified as poor using a poverty cutoff of one third. So if you are deprived in one third of the weighted indicators, then you are poor. And we also report vulnerable and severe poverty. So this MPI was redesigned in 2018 to better us one, two, three, four, six, seven, and 11. And um, many countries now are reporting their national MPI or if they have so adopted it, the global MPI and their SDG leader 1.2.2. So what happened globally before we get to Bangladesh? This year, uh, we cover 107 countries and 5.9 billion people. And we updated data for 25 countries and 913 million people. Across those 5.9 billion people, 22% or 1.3 billion are MPI poor. And of those MPI poor people, one half are children under the age of 18. Two thirds, 67% live in middle income countries where poverty rates range from one to 57% across countries and one to 91% in subnational regions of those middle income countries. 84% of the 1.3 billion MPI poor people live in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. And the, mis the same percentage live in rural areas. And when we say multidimensional, we do mean multidimensional. Of those 1.3 billion people, 99% are deprived in at least three of the 10 indicators and 83% are deprived in at least five. So this is very much looking at the interlocking deprivation loads that people are already carrying before COVID. And we will come to the COVID increases at the end of this presentation. So in the 2020 Global MPI, we update the data for Bangladesh using the multiple indicator cluster survey of UNICEF for 2019. And so Afghanistan within South Asia has the highest poverty, and then Pakistan, Bhutan, whose data come from 2010, so are very old, and then Nepal 2016, India 2015-16, and Bangladesh. Also in South Asia, we report Sri Lanka and Maldives, um, which have lower rates of poverty. In this diagram, you can also see the composition of poverty with the nutrition variables being the red, the mauve colored being education, and the blue being living standards. So you can see in Bangladesh, if you compare Bangladesh to Pakistan, um, there are slightly more cooking fuel or a proportional greater number of people with nobody in their household who has completed six years of schooling, um, but much lower contributions of other indicators. That is because the MPI is also the sum of the weighted percentage of people who are deprived in each indicator. So you can break it down by the 10 indicators. In terms of the mix 2019, we find that nationally, 
24.6% of people are multidimensionally poor, um, ranging from 14.5 in urban areas to 27.4 in rural areas. And the intensity is just a bit over 41 or 42. There is a range within Bangladesh, with Kulna being the least poor and Niamen Singh being the poorest in terms of the headcount ratio of 35% or higher for Niamen Singh. The national MPI is 0 0.104, which means that the poor people in Bangladesh experience about 10% of the deprivations that would be experienced if everybody was poor and deprived in every indicator. Now, one thing that's interesting and very good news for Bangladesh is about the deprivation scores of the poor. So each poor person has um, a score which reflects the percentage of deprivations they personally carry. And I said on average in Bangladesh, that's 42.2%. But what's interesting is that 61% of the poor people have deprivation scores less than 40. So in a sense, we could see an acceleration in the next period because many people are very close to the poverty line and could go over it if they just get rid of one or two more deprivations, which is potentially good news and so worth an investment of energies. In terms of how people are currently deprived at a national level, this is the percentage of people who are poor, so that 24.6, and then are also deprived in each indicator. So the highest levels are in cooking with a solid cooking fuel, wood, charcoal, dung, or not having a, a pukka house um, in terms of wall, floor, and roof. Um, though years of schooling, which has a higher weight, and nutrition contribute significantly also. Um, but if you look at drinking water, as we know, Bangladesh is doing very well there, also very well in child mortality. Um, less than 4.6% of people are deprived in electricity. And again, school attendance deprivations are low. Now, I'd like to move to the second aspect of the presentation, which is changes over time. This year, we launched the first comprehensive update of the Global MPI, where we look at changes over time for two periods for 5 billion people, uh, 75 countries. Of those 75 countries, 65 had statistically significant reductions of MPI at 95% confidence levels. And the three fastest countries were in Africa, Sierra Leone, Mauritania, and Liberia. Um, that's in absolute terms. And it's no surprise because the poorest countries have the furthest to go. So it's easier for them to have a big absolute reduction. The fastest in relative terms, North Macedonia, China, and Armenia had very low starting rates of poverty. So it's easiest for them to cover most of the distance to zero poverty. Bangladesh is in the middle of the distribution. And so while it does very well, it was not one of the fastest in either of the two indicators. And that's normal. The number of people leaving poverty also depends on the years between the survey. So India, we had 10 years of the survey and India has a lot of people. And so it had the most number to leave poverty, um, followed by China and then third by Bangladesh. So Bangladesh reduced poverty, the number of poor people in five years by 19 million, which is very, uh, I think, significant and positive. So let's look a little bit more at Bangladesh between 2014 and 2019. Now, what do we do? We are academics, so we strictly harmonize every single indicator definition so that the 2014 and 2019 surveys are exactly the same. We're comparing like with like. So what difference it makes, you'll see on the screen, is that by the harmonized MPI with that T on it, the current headcount rate is 24.1 instead of 24.6.
So we focus only mainly on the changes and we use the 2020, which is the better number to look at the composition of poverty. But this is the advantage you can rigorously uh, compare it across time. And in annual terms, Bangladesh reduced its national MPI by 10% um, each year in relative terms, which is significant. So its MPI went from 0.175 to 0.101. It reduced 42% of the distance to zero poverty only in five years. So in my view, that's good progress. That's uh, a fast paced. The headcount ratio came from 37.6 to 24.1. So it, it fell by 13.5 percentage points of the population of Bangladesh, 19 million people in five years, which again seems strong progress. And intensity uh, also fell strongly. Intensity has a lower bound, and so it doesn't look as dramatic, but it, it did go down. So how did this change occur? This diagram shows each indicator and the percentage per year of people who um, came out of deprivation in that indicator. So each of the reductions in the 10 indicators was statistically significant at 99%, which is fantastic. Very few countries managed that. Um, and interestingly, um, electricity had a large percentage point reduction from 23.8% to 4.6%. Housing, assets, um, sanitation and cooking fuel also had large reductions. So that's a, a positive um, uh, thing. And also both the nutrition and the years of schooling, which recall are the deprivations that remain the highest, they also had the largest reductions. Um, so that's the pattern um, that we have. And the numbers at the bottom in small are the starting headcount ratio in 2014. So you can see drinking water did not go down much, but only 4.1% of people were deprived in drinking water back in 2014. In this diagram, and I'm sorry, I, I, the mark, marks are not showing, we see all of the countries lined up and um, you can find Bangladesh um, on both sides. On the left side, the red is the absolute change and on the right side, the blue is the relative change. Um, but I can simply tell you that Bangladesh is somewhere in the middle of both distributions, um, although it is a slightly higher rank in the relative range. Uh, well, no, in the in the red, it's between Congo and Mozambique. Um, uh, it's a, uh, and in the blue, it is um, between Bosnia and Dominican Republic. So what was distinctive about the patterns within Bangladesh? Um, so in this graphic, which I also have on the next slide, uh, we have the starting level of multidimensional poverty in 2014 on the horizontal axis. So the poorest are on the right. And the poorest age group were children aged zero to nine. The next poorest are children aged 10 to 17. And then those aged 60 and above, and th then those aged 18 to 59. The vertical is the pace of reduction of MPI annualized in the uh, intervening period. And children zero to nine are in the bottom. They're making change the fastest, followed by children 10 to 17. And when we combine these population weighted and look at statistically significant differences between children and adults, children reduce poverty faster than adults. Again, something that was not accomplished in one third of the countries. What happened subnationally? So I'd first like you to look at the panel on the bottom with the green bubbles. The green bubbles are from 20, 2004 to 14, something we reduced last year. And you see that the poorest bubble on the far right 
didn't make the fastest progress. That was Silhet. Now, if you look at the upper panel, um, you can see that in the current five years, from 2014 to 2019, Silhet began being the poorest uh, subnational region, but it made progress the fastest. And as we saw, it's no longer it is the poorest subnational region. So it is, in terms of leaving no one behind, it's a pro-poor story where the poorest regions, whether they're children or provinces, reduced MPI the fastest and are catching up. So that's what we want to see. We don't want to see what we saw in the previous period where the poorest region was going slowly. Now, how does Bangladesh's reduction of MPI incidents compare with its reduction of $1.95 incidents? Um, and we see here that um, Bangladesh reduced its um, MPI incidents more than twice as fast as that of $1.90 a day, which is very good news. Um, That's all right. of the different regions, and South Asia is the second region in, and the medians, population-weighted median, are the black bar. So it's just to say that South Asia, as a region among all of the world regions, had the, the fastest reduction of MPI in the measured periods, but every country had a different period, so we can't exactly um, align them and compare them. So in sum, um, Bangladesh reduced its MPI 42% in five years. The poorest region reduced poverty the fastest, as did children. Um, and all of the 10 indicators reduced statistically significantly. Um, and in South Asia, it had the fastest relative poverty reduction. So that's just an overview. It doesn't tell why. And that's where my esteemed colleagues will know far more than I. And it also is not perfect. We leave out work, we leave out empowerment, we leave out in violence, we leave out you know, financial indicators, many important aspects of poverty. But given the data that we have, this is the analysis that came out. I'd like to spend the last couple minutes simply on two further studies. Like I said, for these 75 countries, we had two periods of time. But we wanted to know if the progress that we observed in those two periods of time continued, how many of these countries would be on track to cut multidimensional poverty by half between 2015 and 2030, as the SDGs require? And we found that of those 75 countries, whether we considered a linear, a logistic, or a constant relative change model, 47 countries would be on track by all three models. 10 were on track by some models, usually the linear, but not by all. And 18 were off track by all three models. Although if those 18 moved to the median level of progress, uh, many of them could cut MPI by half. So that is a positive idea, but of course the problem is all of these projections were before the tragedy of COVID hit us in 2020. So we want to understand now, uh, after 2019, when Bangladesh's data were collected, you know, what is the situation of multidimensional poverty? What we did is basic, and you will have better predictions, I'm sure, yourselves. But we took the World Food Programme and the UNESCO predictions and we simulated six scenarios. In all of them, um, we increased undernutrition. So we took people who were either poor or vulnerable, but not deprived in nutrition. And at micro simulation level, we randomly assigned new undernutrition status to 10%, 25%, up to 50% of the respondents. And that was the first three scenarios. And the second three, we did the same thing, but in every country, we also took half of the school children across the distribution, not limited to poor and vulnerable children, 
and we took them out of school, um, saying that they would not come back to school in the short term. Um, and when we do those, then we find that um, across the 75 countries from the year 2020, we will be sent back from COVID between 3.1 to 9.9 .9 years, um, which is really a difficult and painful thing to countenance. Um, we started reporting the MPI in 2010, and it would be so sad if in 2020, we went back in a matter of months uh, by 10 years. But I'm gonna end with a story of hope, which uh, draws also on Amartya Sen's uh, Financial Times article, which is a brilliant article, April 15th, where he observed that during the time of COVID, countries can take different policy strategies and some would be able, should they wish, to prevent and to mitigate the poverty impacts of COVID and indeed potentially to turn the corner. In the case of the countries we cover, Sierra Leone uh, had the fastest reduction of all 75 countries in terms of MPI. And it did so from 2013 to 2017, which were the very years that it struggled with Ebola. And Amartya Sen similarly observed that in Britain during World War II, because of food rationing, when there was a food availability decline, life expectancy increased for men and for women, six and a half years for men and seven years for women. Whereas in the previous decade, it had only increased 1.2 years for men and 1.5 for women. So despite the terrible um, circumstances of the war or of Ebola, governance was able to turn the corner. And the hope is that you all <laughs> um, will see these numbers, but also that we can together imagine what actions need to be taken now so that those numbers never come into being in Bangladesh. Thank you so very much. Everything that I have done is the work of a team, a team in Human Development Report Office of UNDP, a team in OFI and University of Oxford. I've not been able to present everything that they did, but I do hope that you will consider reading the report in full or looking on our website at some of the links. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Alkar. There was, uh, I thought, an insightful presentation. It gave us you know, plenty of food for thought. And uh, I was, you know, kind of the striking feature was having a positive scenario saying for you know, how Bangladesh did well, and also making the growth more proper in nature. And then after COVID, you know, things have, are going to change, you know, quite dramatically. That is something probably is, uh, has come out so strongly in your, from your presentation. And it has got many, many uh, useful policy implications you know, that perhaps, you know, we all need to, as you've rightly pointed out, uh, work on in the, in the coming days. Uh, before I give the floor to uh, the discussion, uh, Dr. S.M. Zulfikar, quickly, I would like to ask you if there is any way that perhaps you know, we could infer, like you know, say for example, how much of the poverty change or variation that you see in your data can be explained by change in income alone or consumption alone? If there is any way, like you know, we can uh, draw that inference. You don't need to uh, answer, respond to the question right now. Uh, let us go back to our first panelist, and then perhaps you know, uh, you will have a time to respond uh, to this particular query. May I now invite Dr. S.M. Zulfikar Ali, a Senior Research Fellow of Bangladesh Institute of Development Studies for making his intervention. Zulfikar Bhai, over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Rajak. Uh, and thanks, Minister Dr. Rajak, for inviting me to this extremely uh, valuable, useful, and particularly for me uh, in this. Uh, probably, <coughs> um, Probably we, we cannot thank Sabina al Kair enough for her work and also for taking this initiative globally. We here in Bangladesh, we have also been benefiting greatly from this entire initiative and also the methodology that uh, she put forward. And we, many of us are also now following this up and trying in their own to, to apply and to, to uh, do the analysis that 
uh, our data allows us to. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Sabina Alkai, for, for, for this great initiative. In Bangladesh, I think um, social scientists and also the practitioners, particularly the, those uh, from the NGOs working with the poor people, they have been talking about the multidimensional poverty for quite a long time. So they were particularly uh, social scientists from non economics background, sociologists, anthropologists, and other related disciplines. They've been talking about that. So income is important, but income alone is not, uh, uh, cannot explain the poverty. So we have to take into account the other aspects of life. And in that respect, this, this initiative, I think, I mean, showed us a way of actually incorporating, if not all, but a good number of indicators from non-income dimensions and to try and have an, uh, have an assessment of the poverty in multilateral space. Um, as as uh, uh, Dr. Alkan has already mentioned, probably uh, they, uh, they are not entirely satisfied. I mean, the, the uh, sociologists, anthropologists, and some, some economists as well, not entirely satisfied with this model, even that it has not been able to incorporate some other important aspects of non-income indicators like empowerment, like voices, like participation, so and so forth. But I mean, uh, we, we are constrained by the ability of data. We are constrained by the sort of, uh, by the models and methods as well, because I mean, more indicators, even if we decide to incorporate more indicators, that becomes the entire process a bit more complicated as well. So, I mean, but I mean, uh, as it stands now, is a, it is it's a great initiative. We have benefited greatly from that as well. In Bangladesh, one of the, I mean, uh, situation here is that, and also in, in the presentation we have noticed is that income-based poverty situation across the country and poverty situation based on multi-dimensional uh, indicators, it does not necessarily always correspond to each other. They don't want to, we do not see one-to-one -one correspondence. S regions that are better in income dimensions, not necessarily better in non-income dimensions. This is clearly evident from, from, from data as well. We have a major river system which divides the country into east and west. Generally, eastern part of the country is better up in, in, in I mean, in income space. So poverty is lower, per capita income is higher, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, if we consider non-income indicators, the situation is rather better in the western part of the country, even to the northwest, which is considered as the poverty stricken areas as well, but not necessarily they are poor in non-income. So they're relatively better in many indicators. So there is a paradoxical situation in here, and, and probably these multidimensional indices together with the income-based poverty maps, uh, tells us many things about what is going on and what needs to be taken into account. And it has important policy implications as well, as Dr. Alkred pointed out about indi indicator-based situations. So that is very important for the policymakers to take note of and to, to take appropriate policies, uh, be it on nutrition, on education, uh, on schooling, or on other indicators. So, I mean, uh, th th these are very important things. With this, I would like to basically uh, make a few points uh, to the presenter if uh, she can find some time to reflect on that. Uh, when this MPI was conceptualized, uh, if I'm not incorrect, uh, it was thought that I mean it will provide for assessment of poverty in multinational space, but at the individual level. So in, in the income-based or in the poverty assessment, we estimate the household level. But this will provide estimate at the individual level. But out of 10 global indicators that uh, has been taken into account, four of them are individual indicators, individual based, you know, based on which we can assess the situation at the individual level. Six of them are household level indicators. So it is difficult to actually have individual based situation based on the six indicators. So how we can actually have the true or near to individual based situation based on this model? This is, this is one. Second is about, I mean, earlier following Mabul uh, Hawk, uh, UNDP uh, introduced the human poverty index, uh, indices. And they are basically the non-income indicators are taken into account. But MPI, the great advantage of MPI is that it has taken both income and non-income indicators. But uh, I mean, Rajak has uh, 
rightly pointed out to what extent this this income is uh, 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 I mean captured or represented or explains the poverty situation and change in the poverty etc. So in this ten indicators, one of the indicators is assets or based on certain assets. So to what extent we have been able to actually accommodate income dimensions, which is uh, no doubt an important aspects of money, human well-being. So in this MPI as well, I mean, to what extent we have been able to accommodate the income aspects uh, into this MPI. So this is my second point. Uh, um, third is just, uh, just uh, uh, I mean, just to have our own understanding, but, uh, many, uh, clear just to, to advise from you. So for example, okay, you have also explained the situation now between regions, between countries, and also the changes over time. Uh, but if we'd like to uh, uh, have an understanding of the factors responsible for better MPI in some regions or among some people and the poor MPI in some other regions or some other people. So how we can do that, the kind of the analysis of the determinants of MPIs and what are the set of indicators, because it is only 10 indicators in there. So there might be a, I mean, problem of endogenity, etc. So what would be the set of indicators that needs to be taken into account, how we can do that, I mean, so that, I mean, when we go back to the policy maker, they'll ask, what to do when what are the why it is so so this this, this is the an important question my very last point is about the covid you you rightly indicated that based on some simulation you have done some exercises that okay said so if the schooling is affected by 50 percent of the children among 50 percent of the children or nutrition is affected or the malnutrition goes up by certain percentage what will be the situation of the mpa that is there but at the same time my my uh, question is so for example, for income mes measurement, uh, we do have some quick rapid surveys already done by various organizations. And also uh, some assessment uh, has been done based on ASIS data. I mean, what uh, uh, would probably be the impact on poverty? What proportion of income will be reduced? Some kind of uh, assessment, real, or close to real assessment of the impact on income and the poverty, etc. So, in multi-dimensional space, uh, MPI, is there a way to really? I mean, uh, of course, we can do it through simulation, but is there any way of doing some quick surveys or assessments and to reflect on that? Okay, this is the situation due to the COVID or over the last three four months of lockdown or another three four months of uh, situation like this, it will impact in Bangladesh or in other countries or in different regions. Uh, this would be the range of impacts uh, in multinational space. Uh, thank you so much uh, for giving me time and for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, pa. thank you, Dr. Zulfikar Ali. Let me now bring in uh, Professor Abu Yusuf. Uh, Professor Yusuf, your five minutes begin now. Um, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, this session, basically, I would like to uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Sabina Alkair uh, and also uh, for, uh, for her wonderful uh, speech uh, to make a uh, very wonderful presentation on MPI, which is uh, very, uh, very much area of interest of me because I used to teach poverty uh, in the, at the university level, poverty dynamics, poverty issues. So MPI, uh, calculation of MPI and MPI implications on um, with the policy is, is very uh, one of the area uh, that is of my interest. Uh, it was uh, good to see that, uh, you know, uh, Bangladesh has done, uh, you know, very uh, impressive picture uh, on the reduction of MPI uh, between 2014 and 2019 using this uh, mixed data um, done by UNICEF. Um, so, uh, as rightly pointed out by Dr. Julfika, that, uh, you know, it's, it's a qualitative in nature. And uh, the basic differences, you know, uh, we started with if, the, if we consider the evolution of the concept of poverty over the years, it started with the income poverty and then, you know, broadened up with uh, non-monetary aspects and uh, uh, multidimensional aspects, um, human development, uh, uh, actually uh, human poverty, um, and also, you know, uh, latest, this one uh, multidimensional poverty aspects. 
so uh, you know every as you started with your presentation that uh, every model or every every uh, index has some limitations so you have to end up with uh, some point uh, with with some criticism you know in social science that's the uh, beauty of social science but uh, one important issues that uh, i would like ha like to highlight in the mpi that is based on observation and you know there is a quotation in the um, uh, in the UNDP report in 1990 and 2000, 2001 uh, report on attacking poverty that don't ask me what is poverty. If you just observe where, where I'm living and uh, what's my situation, then you will find what is poverty. So you don't need to come up with any uh, income measurement or something like that. So, so I think uh, MPI is uh, most, to some extent a reflection of you know, these observation matters or something like that. So despite you presented that, uh, you know, we have some significant reduction in terms of MPI, I think it's a macro picture. And also, you there are some divisional level statistics. But in Bangladesh, you know, with this, there are some, you know, uh, poverty prone areas. Like if you consider headcount index of poverty, you know, more than seven, uh, uh, more than uh, seven districts, they have a poverty incidence more than 50%. And one particular district like Kurigram, they have a poverty incidence like 70%. And I hope that, you know, that MPI is also, you know, very dominant, you know, that in, the, in that area. So deprivation and uh, coming with this, you know, COVID situation and also with this flood, Ampan and that natural disaster and also situation is uh, very close. So if we look at the district level, I think, is, is there any possibility? Because we have the information at the divisional level, but if we get the district level information, and as you know, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics for the first time in the Household Income and Expenditure Survey, they uh, published the And if we could have this data in terms of MPI, that would give us very uh, you know rigorous picture and true picture. Uh, so how these locations also matter, and uh, you know. Um, that uh, Robert Chambers uh, came up with five dimensions, you know, deprivation trap. So isolation, empowerment, uh, and different physical weakness. So these are the issues also that contributed in the uh, poverty scenario. But as a whole, uh, it's good to see that, you know, with the, you know, Bangladesh has been, you know, uh, walking on the path of 7% uh, growth. And we have seen in the MPI that it's a pro poor growth, inclusive uh, you know, inclusive growth and growth benefits the poor, but it's maybe a macro level, but we need to see the micro level, say for, you know, Chor area, Howard area, Chitong Hill Tax area. So we need to look at this. That are the challenges issues. And also inequality is also another area that, you know, over the years in Bangladesh, you know, bottom uh, 5%. So they are owner of only 0.23% of the resources. while Top five percent, they are owner of the twenty-four percent of the resources. So we need to look at this inequality issues also. So I think uh, um, you know we need to make a uh, balance uh, between this. Uh, must be poverty must be reduced with the equality. Then growth will uh, benefit the poor. So we need to look at uh, these areas as a whole. I am very happy to see the results. You know, uh, in the South Asia, Bangladesh uh, is on the top in terms of reduction of MPI. So, but we need to, uh, this COVID situation, uh, we need to look at how, you know, we still believe that it is a temporary situation, but, you know, it may have a long-term uh, impacts on poverty, uh, whatever it is, income poverty or multidimensional poverty, but uh, we, we need to focus on this. Of course, in the sustainable development goals, goal one, that there will be no poverty by you know, 2030. So we need to look at these issues. And also, of course, you know, school, uh, now is a holiday, so uh, school is uh, uh, the children. They are not attending school, and there is you know food midday meal in the schools. So maybe it has some impacts on uh, on the nutrition issues of the nutrition of the children. I think um, uh, UNICEF uh, representative Dr. Deep Deepak may uh, put shed, uh, some uh, shade on this uh, because how children are the affected because this is one of the indicators also schooling in the uh, in the MPI. So uh, again, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Sabina Alkayer for her wonderful present.
presentations and all other participation um, uh, participants. Uh, I think uh, research and policy integration for development. Uh, Rapid uh, will organize similar events in future. And uh, so with this, I, I must stop here. And thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity, Dr. Rajak. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Yusuf. I think you made some very good points and uh, important points, and those should also be you know, discussed widely at the policy level. Uh, I would now like to uh, request uh, Dr. Mahfuz Kobir for his intervention. Dr. Mahfuz Kobir. Yes, thank you. Am I audible? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Samin Alkar uh, for coming here and making a, a brilliant uh, presentation. And I, I participated in a, a 16 July, in fact, global launching of the, of the MPI. So, and I was curious to ask questions, but uh, then I thought it would be better if I invite you, in fact, in, in, a, in a program. So that is basically the history, but there is another history. So I first meet you on uh, 19th of May, 2016. So it was a program in, in Brad. So, and you made the presentation for the first time I came back to the, the uh, concept of MPI and then it was like a storm in fact uh, it's a new concept uh, that, that I uh, came across and and then uh, a lot of questions in my mind and th in the next year in 2017 I did a national survey even though the sample size was not big it was about uh, 2000 but still I did the MPI so and, and for, for Bangladesh and try to de at, at the uh, sub-national level like I mean the uh, the uh, divisional level, and it, there I found that the uh, multi-dimensional poverty headcount ratio is uh, about 31 percent in, in Bangladesh. Even though the data is not nationally representative, but definitely it gives a kind of impression because when I compare the data with the 2014, so you did that for, for at global level and uh, for Bangladesh using the BTHS data 2014. So definitely uh, this consistent. Uh, uh, Kind of finding that I got. Now it's it's your turn. So you did the, uh, the analysis, and then definitely it's it's consistent and consistently decreasing. Now it's, it's about 24.6 percent. So definitely Bangladesh is uh, going along with the other, in fact, the national head headcount ratio. So but based on HIES, so that is number one. But when you compare the data of BDHS, Demography and Health Survey. With the data, it's another set of data, uh, mixed data. So even the mixed data is it's fantastic. So even though the as as far as uh, the discussion uh, was concerned with the PBS, so PBS wanted to do an another case in 2019 or something, and and incorporate the uh, the indicators of MPI. So then I continued to place the PBS in in many different uh, platforms that they should not do the uh, MPI with the, in fact, uh, age data. Because age data, even though it's, it's good, but uh, I, had a, I, I had a kind of uh, strong, in fact, assumption that mixed data is better because mixed uh, basically is consistent with the population census. It's a very high precision. So, and, and it uh, also uh, uh, in fact has a lot of, in fact, good indicators. It is consistent with that. So if the, Indicators of, for example, the nutritional indicators, the Z scores, so that that can can be incorporated in the mix. So it's, it's good. So and I, I'm happy that BBS has done it and you used it in the, in your uh, MPI. So that's good thing. But uh, if I consider the theoretical uh, background of uh, MPI, it's uh, age multiplied by A, headcount multiplied by deprivation. So and and the three dimensions. So uh, uh, education, health, and living standard. And, and when I visualize it, I try to imagine, then I found a, a, find a three dimensional space. So, and the three indicators, I mean, three dimensions, the education, health, and, and I also imagine people, a lot of people whose hands are tied with three ropes, in fact. So this is kind of, in fact, uh, impression that gives the API, so, and, and the indicators. Definitely it's not a complete one, but it gives a human kind of dimension. So that the deprivation and the, so this is this is basically the thing. And I actually worked with the mix. In fact, mix 2019. So it's an excellent database, and all the indicators are in there, including the sanitation, 
good things are in there electricity in fact drinking water even though there are problems like i mean the e coli so there is no data on e coli but there is a data on arsenic so definitely it's a good good kind of thing and definitely i said that they have a number of assets i mean the physical assets assets that you indicate in your uh, uh, in fact note in fact the technical note so there's good data and i think uh, for the, from the uh, uh, in fact onward estimates i think the mix should be the data the data source of the global in fact uh, mpi so this is number uh, number 2 number 3 is national versus local so i think that is a very good thing and the other day on on 16 dean jolip in fact he raised a very good point so if there are national attributes like education there might be climate change so can we uh, have an adjustment factor for mpi so that you can think of because there are a lot of in fact local dimensions uh, like national dimensions in all the countries so uh, and that that could be done and i think bbs is doing and you are also doing and and there is a technical problem i think uh, in in stata common so i did the, i i look for this and and i found that even though you are uh, talking that you tell told that it's one third but in stata code it's 0.3 so i i think there might be a problem so you, you can check check it so uh, and there is another thing like i mean there is is nicely mentioned by uh, professor yusu that there are in fact sub national it's beyond the uh, division level so district level and sometimes i mean the uh, climate in the vulnerable districts and and areas so uh, and bbs is doing definitely i, I think bbs is doing and we are now doing the uh, human development report for bangladesh for 2020 and dr rajat is a team member then i i am also a team member so this discussion will be great uh, i mean the greatly helpful for for all of us and for for the uh, participants who are uh, involved in different studies on on poverty and and uh, finally uh, the uh, i think there is a need for another uh, index so you are doing the a uh, multi dimensional poverty index you can also think of another index like multi dimensional development index so it's just the opposite so this is just just an idea so uh, and that's it so thank you very much thank you uh, dr mahfuz kabir for uh, those very helpful remarks uh, dr savina alkar we have already received you know quite a few good questions as you can see on the chat box i hope you will be able to address in at least some of them we also know that the time is really short on our side but with your kind permission i would like to take maybe three or four questions you know from our uh, uh, other other participants here uh, it is difficult to mention by names but still i would like to do so i can see here dr deepak kumar dev from unicef as you mentioned that some of the poverty statistics on children probably uh, they would be interested uh, uh, to tell us like you know what they are doing about it and i can also say mr aminul arifin from undp uh, if he would also have anything to ask or make any comment uh, i would like to take them we have also got a colleague from brac and given the kind of work they do i would also like to give them one minute uh, opportunity to pose any particular question that they might have so uh, uh, dipak da with you first one minute please if that is all right thank you very much uh, i think it's a great opportunity to see sabina again uh, sabina i am deepak from unicef uh, thank you very much for your all round support in doing uh, the national mpi initiative with gd and bbs it is going to be the the mpi estimate i think the national mpi will give that kind of uh, uh, figures my question with you is i presentation you made is excellent and uh, uh, when we do the draft uh, national mpi for this the data sets i mean giving a very rich analysis my question uh, uh, is that you know uh, when uh, we get uh, a good analysis uh, some of the policy makers ask that what is for us especially the ministry of finance because ministry of finance uh, allocate resources to different ministries so is it uh, do you have any advice based on the analysis which you presented 
uh, for them that how they should or they may like to uh, reallocate resources in the best interest of uh, reducing the poverty in the country over from my side. Thank you so much, uh, so much Deepak Da. Uh, Amrinal Bhai, would you like to uh, have any uh, your question or comments? Uh? Thank you, Razak Bhai. I have, um, I think, particularly two questions to Sabina. Uh, first, thank you, Sabina, for her uh, wonderful presentation. My first question is um, what I actually was observing uh, from the uh, different. Um, graphs uh, or figures um, in the presentation. Bangladesh is not doing bad comparatively uh, and then well ahead uh, uh, and compared to the South countries like that. My first question is that what is the actual bullet, uh, the magic bullet for Bangladesh? Uh, a bit advancing than other countries, number one. Number second, when we are talking about multilateral poverty, can I say that uh, one magic uh, policy decision by current government, uh, the housing for uh, for uh, vulnerable or, or the poor who, who doesn't have any housing, like um, it's called Asran uh, pro project, uh, and it also ensured structure building, water, electricity and other thing. Will it impact um, my question to Sabina that how she is uh, looking at this program. This could be a one magic bullet program for Bangladesh addressing the uh, and then solve the multidimensional poverty issue or, or anything else and then what actually experience it in other countries. So the first question is like that what is Bangladesh um, achievements and then how she uh, see the policy and program perspective that Bangladesh took last one decades number of programs could be like that and that helps Bangladesh a bit progress ahead number one and number second uh, I see from her presentation that Prime Minister's own initiative by next year uh, uh, everybody should have housing uh, and will it work solve the multidimensional poverty in Bangladesh? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Aminul Bhai. Um, our colleague from uh, BRAC, uh, would you like to now take your one minute? I don't uh, see her. In that case, Professor Taibur Rahman, would you like to ask any particular question or comments you have? Uh, sorry, I, I, I'm not sure whether I can, I can see you anymore. Um, Dr. Shobashish Borwa, can you hear me? Would you like to ask any question? Right. If, if not, then for the time being, we can go back to Dr. Sabina Alkar. There are quite a few questions in the chat box as well. And if you would kindly respond to the comments also made by our panelists, and then see whether we can have another quick short round to have a couple of more questions. Thank you so much, if that is at all possible. Thank you so much. And thank you to all for the interchange and interactions, and also to Mahus Kabir for reaching out and being part of the organizing of this. I, I think that was really interesting to hear the background. I'll offer a few thoughts in response, but by no means um, comprehensive. Both Zulfikar Ali and Professor Yusuf mentioned the lack of empowerment in the MPI, and that continues to be one of my sadnesses because um, I have done research on measurement of empowerment and participation and voice, and it's something that I believe very strongly is important because it's it's that agency of poor people, not just of government or private sector of NGOs, which is the primary reason that become people leave poverty is is their own actions and agency. So I, I, all I can say is that it is a data constraint and I don't know how we can change these data. I'm so grateful to DHS and to MIX for the data they make available. And yet it, it is 
a sadness that we can't include um, a, a few of these questions. Um, both um, the chair, Dr. Rada, and Zulfikar uh, Ali talked about income and PI. There was discussion on growth. So the assets indicator is very limited. It asks whether or not they own more than one of radio, television, telephone, um, animal cart, bicycle, motorcycle, car or truck, computer, and refrigerator. Um, and so it's, it's very rudimentary. And yet we do see a strong reduction of assets at, in Bangladesh and in other countries that have strong growth. The fastest, as I said, is in electricity, but asset deprivations went down. And they, in a sense, reflect more a sense of permanent income than perhaps a volatile sense of income. But I think that that is one way of bringing it in. But I would simply acknowledge that uh, monetary poverty is not captured in the MPI. And where we are able to have both measures from the same survey, we find that the people who are poor by both measures are the same people, that there is a rather large mismatch. And so there are only in a few surveys in Ghana, or sorry, Uganda or in Nepal, uh, where we've been able to perfectly match the global MPI and monetary poverty. But we do see mismatches um, at the individual level. And so that's an area where I, I continue to feel that more research is needed. And Bangladesh might be a good place for that research, given, as you said, the, the divisions in the West and the East having different characters in terms of the, the different measures of poverty. Um, a, a very useful point from uh, Zulfikar Ali was about the rapid surveys. We've been doing, uh, since March, COVID emergency response in many countries, not in Bangladesh. And we are using the rapid surveys, whether it's socioeconomic impact surveys, uh, telephone surveys, um, different kinds of data that are coming in from different countries. And some of them do not cover enough indicators really for MPI, but some of them do. And so we're finding we are all on a learning curve um, in terms of getting multi-topic household questionnaires that have to be quite short on mobile phones. But where the data do come in and, and are high quality, we are, we are able to see you know, quite clearly the impacts of COVID. Other strategies, for example, in Colombia, they had a recent census and they adjusted temporarily the privacy law to be able to fold in uh, health records data with the census. And so they could look at contagion patterns. So there's a lot of innovation in the space of data and poverty numbers. I think from a multidimensional perspective, the most important is that the new rapid surveys should include the different indicators of the MPI, um, because those I think are of direct relevance at this time and, and directly actionable. And as there is migration, as well as changes in, in, of other kinds, it's important to grasp. Um, very quickly also, I appreciated Professor Yusuf's acknowledgement that it's not just children out of school, but children who lack the midday cooked meals or the other benefits of school going that will again exacerbate um, children's circumstances in COVID. And, and we recognize that there are other kinds of impacts that are going to be affecting the other MPI indicators. Our hope the next time we do those simulations is to have some country specific predictions that will be able to fold in for a smaller set of countries. Um, and you may, you may have some for us. Um, in terms of Mahfouz um, Kabir, um, I am very, very grateful for the mix survey, but we recognize that at the moment it doesn't go to district level. We have previously, of course, been able to go to district level and beyond the division. And that does seem, as also Professor Yusuf said, just really vital to go, go beneath the divisional level. Um, but the, the mixed survey does have the, these other indicators, um, including some we haven't looked at at the global MPI, like learning outcomes or the water quality. Um, in terms of having a multidimensional development indicator, a well-being indicator, we have worked with the government of Bhutan with their Gross National Happiness Index. We're doing an academic paper now in Britain on a, a well-being measure. But I do agree that that might be a next step. And lastly, um, for Deepak Kumar, a fantastic question on budget allocation. Um, many governments are using the national MPI or the global MPI or both 
to readjust their budget allocations. And the way that they do that, it depends because there are sectoral and regional allocations. And what usually there is a formula uh, for using it, which has something about population number and density, um, something about economic poverty, something about other needs. Uh, but putting the MPI appropriately into that regional allocation formula is, is one step for, for forward. And the second is to look at the, the sectoral allocations and make sure that there are sectoral allocations that uh, would address each of the censored headcount ratios uh, of the indicators of the MPI. Because if any deprivation of any poor person goes down, automatically without any doubt at all, MPI goes down. So that's, that's is a very clear policy track. Um, and we can give you examples of other countries or their ministers could come. We were honored to have the Minister of Planning at the launch of the global MPI um, from Bangladesh, from, from, from the MPC here. Um, so those are a, a few thoughts, um, but, uh, and, and the answer to UNIS, UNDP about there being a magic bullet, there wasn't one, but you are right, housing drove change, electricity drove change to a large extent, but also years of schooling. It's very interesting, last year I compared Bangladesh and Pakistan, because in each country they had about 64, 62 million people who didn't have somebody who had completed 10 years of, six years of schooling in their household. Um, but Bangladesh had four times the number of children who had completed six years of schooling within their household. And so what's happening in Bangladesh is also the, the, the children going out uh, and, and becoming young adults are, are very much more educated. So that's an interesting pattern. I, I, I know I have not done very good at all in terms of answering many of the questions in the chat, but maybe I'll go back to the chair for your advice. But thank you all so very much. Uh, thank you, but Dr. Alka. I thought you did an excellent job. Of course, you know, not all questions can be answered within the limited time that we have. With your kind permission, I would like to ask for two more minutes because I see Mr. Mahabub, Rahman, uh, Mahabub Kabir uh, from Plan International. He would like to ask one question. But Dr. Alkar, I would also like you to take one question from the chat box that came from Dr. Asif Hassan. And this is about uh, the waiting system you know, that have, have been used, has been used in constructing the MPI. Uh, do you think this equal weighting is a good idea and uh, how do you see the room for improvement and taking it further? Mr. Mahabu Kovir, uh, over to you for a minute, please. Sorry, maybe uh, uh, we, we uh, don't see him now. So, that's fine. And then in that case, uh, Dr. Alkair, would you like to respond to that particular query? And then uh, I would like to conclude if that is acceptable. Very much so. No, it's a good question. Um, the weights are equal across the dimensions and the indicators within dimensions. So one sixth for the health and education indicators and one eighteenth for the living standard. And they were very controversial back in 2010 when we released the MPI. And for that reason, we now regularly release the robustness results where we switch the weights on each dimension one by one to 50% and the other two dimensions to 25%. And then we can look at the, the rankings of countries and see what percent given standard errors, um, confidence intervals of 95% are robust in terms of pairwise comparisons. Um, and we've done a paper on that, uh, which is online now. Um, with Nicolai Sopa, um, Ushika Nagaratnam, Ricardo Nogales, where we also have the results for all of the weights from zero to 100% on, on the indicators. And so we're able to really explore robustness quite comprehensively. What we find is that the pairwise comparisons of countries are rather robust um, to changes in the weights. And in, in our view, that's a good sign for the policy relevant measure. Uh, that uh, if we change the weights a little bit, Bangladesh will not change its rank very much, nor would any other country. And so that means that there's a kind of stability. It, we lose that stability if we go from zero to 100%. But 
but within a limited range of 25 to 50 percent per dimension, we are able to have uh, a robust uh, uh, ranking of the countries. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Dr. Alka. It was such a uh, great thing to hear from you, uh, someone who worked in this area and have been able to influence us in our work, as many of us have pointed out here. Uh, I would like to thank you for your time. And at the same time, I would also like to thank Dr. Mahfuz Kobir for making this possible, uh, most grateful. And uh, I would also like to thank our other panelists, Professor Abu Yusuf and Dr. Zulfikar Ali, and uh, those who have joined us and uh, asked questions in the chat box. I'm sure you know some of the questions that we'll continue to discuss in the rapid platform, but also elsewhere. Uh, but fundamentally though, I don't want to make, uh, we'll try to uh, sort of, you know, uh, do a summary of the rich discussion that has taken place. Uh, for me, there are a couple of things that probably I would like you to know, take away from uh, this particular uh, event. The first one was, I mean, we have such a you know, rich poverty measurement uh, kind of you know, metric uh, that we have. And perhaps, you know, we should be able to make further improvements. And there is a lot for uh, doing, you know, in terms of getting the right kind of you know, information and analysis and linking it with the policymakers. The issue of you know, conveying the right kind of message to the policymaker is, is also you know, quite important and has already been pointed out by one of the participants. Now, one issue though, I think, which is extremely important for Bangladesh as we make the transition from the post COVID to a more kind of you know, normal situation is this, how we are going to evaluate the poverty uh, in the near future. And one big issue that we have is the quality of data. You see. Some of the indicators you know, that within MPR are fantastic tools, and you know, even for us to understand, like you know, the poverty and the vulnerability aspect. But it is also important to get the right kind of data and using the right methodology. And it is also important to establish the methodology once and then make sure that over time, we are able to maintain the consistency so that data are comparable you know, over time period. Uh, again, poverty, vulnerability, these issues are very close to our heart. And I think for Bangladesh, these issues are going to be prominent in the policy making exercises. And I look forward to having further uh, discussions with you. And I believe we all be able to provide some good insightful inputs to our policymakers in the coming days. Uh, Dr. Sabina Alkert, thank you so much once again for your time and we look forward to keeping in touch with you and all the best to you and your colleagues at uh, Oxford University. Thank you very much indeed. And thanks to all our participants, panelists. Thank you, good evening and good night. Thank you, Rajat thank, thank you, Sabina and others. Thank you, Dipu. Thank you. 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 Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.